Hi, good morning everyone. Good morning, my name is Joey and it's a privilege, it's an honor for me to be here, to be invited by, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the leadership team, Pastor Alvin Ang, Pastor Roy, uh, Ding, and Abeg Pion, so and the rest of the leaders who invited us. Um, I come from every nation, uh, Victory Fort, so I come in peace as an ambassador of Christ, and honestly, who I am is not that important, but what, the, what I bring to you, the message of God, that's what's important, okay? So I hope um, you enjoy your time and learn something. I believe that God has a message for all of us this morning, okay? Good morning. Uh, I'd like to, can you tap the person beside you and say, are you ready? Tas gumanti ka sabihin mo, gising ako. Yeah, okay. Because, um, oh, there are foreigners here. I'm awake. I'm awake, okay? So, you know, uh, coming here, I come from Barrio Capitolio, Pasig, and uh, passing through EDSA, I saw McDonald's, okay? And when I saw McDonald's, um, whenever I was reminded of what my mom did before, uh, my mom who works in the Green Hills area, um, what she did was, um, you know, Right now, it's Mission Sunday, okay? So, relationship to community and the world. And, you know, whenever my mom goes home, she, she calls up the house to say that uh, I'm going home. And then I would ask for pasalubong, okay? From McDonald's. And what comes to mind for me is always Big Mac. So, whenever I see the sign of McDonald's, it's Big Mac, okay? Now, maybe some of you, whenever you go somewhere, okay, you're reminded of something. And to lighten things up, I have a game for you. Okay? Who among you likes chocolates? Raise your hand. There, okay. Let me rephrase that. Who among you loves chocolates? Raise your hands. There, okay. So we'll have just a simple audience participation. And what we'll do is, um, my friend Kian will give the chocolates. This is true, okay? Kian, can you stand up and show the chocolates? We have chocolates here. Okay, but please eat it after the service, okay? All you have to do is when I show a picture, when I show a picture, you tell me what comes to your mind. Is that clear? But you have to raise your hand to be acknowledged, okay? So yung mga iba talaga na, chocolate, nanginig ako, I'm, I'm shaking and I want chocolate, it's okay, okay? There's enough. There's enough for all of us in 7-Eleven, okay? There's 7-Eleven there you can buy afterwards, okay? So let's begin. Remember, just raise your hand. And remember to smile. Can you all smile? Smile? There. Good. That's good. Okay. The first one. What's this? Starbucks. What does it... What comes to your mind? Okay. See, the, I, I acknowledge that, that, that girl over there. She's raising her hand. You should raise your hand first, right? I said. Okay. Raise your hand first and then we'll give you. Okay. And then we'll give you. That's just a sample. Coffee. Okay. For the next one, it's a row... What's that? Row like so. Uh, a Kian there, that girl. The middle, the one white there. Do um, you have a mic for that? Okay, thank you. Uh, can you state your name, address, Suking Tindahan? Uh, and, good morning. Uh, I'm Yasemin. Yasemin. I live nearby. Okay. And the first thing that comes to my mind is oh. like a phrase of. Okay. A phrase: "Time is gold." Oh, okay. Time is gold. Okay, different. Yeah. Can you give him another? So it's a watch. Okay, it's a watch whenever you think of Rolex. So thank you for sharing that. But you don't need to analyze it that far, okay? Just what comes to your mind, okay? It's that, ah, oh, I see the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. Not like that, okay? Not too far, okay? Okay, the next picture, okay? Raise your hand to be acknowledged. The next picture. What, what's your name, ma'am? My name is Janet and I see a mobile phone. Okay, a cell phone, okay. Actually, I was referring to the object behind the phone, but it's okay. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Kidding, kidding, kidding aside. That's correct, the phone. Okay, the next one. Raise your hand, uh, be eagle-eyed to our, our shirts. The next one. How about the, the girl, the eight-year-old girl there? Uh, eight or nine-year-old girl there, Kian. There. That one. What's her name? What's your name? Okay, she's speechless. Okay, speechless. Phoenix. What's what's your answer? Phoenix. What's your answer? Eunice. Eunice. She can joy. She can joy. Wow. It's a good thing we're not a television show, right? 
Chicken. We'll stop at chicken. Okay, good. Huh? Thank you. You'll probably be a comedian Next. in the future, right? Chicken Joy. She is full of joy whenever she eats chicken at KFC. Okay. Thank you, Eunice. Okay. The next one. The next one, okay? There, there. Oh, yung iba dugo ang pa. Ouch, Joey. It's so painful. Oh, go. What's your name? Uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. Basketball, of Basketball, course. yes. Basketball, thank you. You know, you know, who among you were able to watch last night? Who among you cried? Among you. It's hard, right? But we're proud to be Filipinos, right? So, you know, they represented us really well. There's still hope. You know why? See, I love basketball. There's still an Olympic qualifier. They get all those second place to fourth place of each from Europe, from North America, and then they battle it out. So there's still a chance. More exposure for the Filipinos. So let's be in faith, okay? Now this one, now this one, is that the last one? Okay. Now this one, I want everyone to answer, okay? I want you to shout, to shout your answer, okay? One, two, three. No more price, okay? If you want chocolates, go to 7-Eleven, okay? You can buy. One, two, three, go. What comes to your mind when you see this picture? Church. What comes to mind when you hear church? What? God, what else? I hear different answers, okay? What? Oh, okay, different, see? And now, why did I post this picture? You know what? The function of the church, there are many things that we do with church, right? With the different seasons, whether um, baby dedication, right? Or death to a family or helping the poor or even marriage. Or even marriage, okay? Or even marriage, sorry, overflow of the heart. I'm still single. Okay, anyway. But when you look at the church, what is the main function of the church? It is actually for the lost world. For those who haven't encountered Jesus Christ. And why did I post this? So that you will realize, oh, what's the reason why we are in church? What's the main function of church? Why did Jesus build the church? And I have here a verse from Pastor Bill Hybels. He said, when any church loses the spirit of the Great Commission, it surrenders the very reason for its existence. It's true, right? What's the Great Commission? Do you know the Great Commission? Go and make disciples of all nations. And when you look at this, you know, it strikes the heart because maybe some of you, you've been attending church for the longest time. If a friend of yours, a best friend, a neighbor asks you, why do you go to church? What do you do there? Sometimes you hesitate and you're not that clear. But later on, we will discuss what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about this? And, you know, I want to show a, a picture of this postal office. This postal office, okay, in the United States, they spent millions of dollars to build this place. Okay, the governor made a speech. The bands were playing. Everyone was in a good mood. Okay, everyone, they were celebrating, confetti everywhere. So it was a festive mood. But you know what? One day, when during the first time that they would accept, okay, letter, a man walked in and was about to deposit and give his letter, and to their embarrassment, to those who made it, they forgot one thing. What did they forget? They forgot this one, the mailbox itself. And actually, it's a funny thing, right? I mean, it costs a few hundred dollars compared to the millions they spent for the post office. But it speaks a lot. It speaks volumes. Because losing this negates the very reason of the post office existence. Right? It loses its existence. Why did we make that when we forgot the very reason why we did this in the first place? So, today, to this afternoon, okay, it's almost, it's almost 12 noon. Today, we're going to discuss how did the early church start? What's with the church? Why did God build the church? And we are here right now to find the answer through God's word through the Bible, okay? Now, we're going to look at in the book of Acts. When you talk about the book of Acts in, in chapter 1, this was a time wherein Jesus resurrected from the dead, okay? And then, he appeared to his apostles, to the apostles, for 40 days. He appeared and talked about the kingdom of God. Actually, during one of those moments, it said in the Bible that when he appeared, one of the apostles asked, Lord, is it the right time? Is it going to be now that you're going to restore the kingdom of God? 
to Israel because they were thinking for the longest time that they were afraid, they were scattered because they got afraid because Jesus died and then people were separated and, you know, during this time, there was no church, okay? The church is not actually the stones but actually the people, okay? Can you tell the person beside you, you are the church? Can you, can you tell the person beside you, you are the church? This is true so that you will remember this, this theology, this important truth. You are the church. And during that time, Jesus answered the apostle, it is not for you to know what the Father, what the season the Father has prepared in His authority. And then He said this, okay, His plans. Can you say His plans? God has plans. Okay, the reason we are here right now is to discuss what is the plan of God. Actually, when you talk about God's plans, he's talking about the kingdom of God. When you talk of the kingdom of God, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is a plan of God from the beginning. God's kingdom will reign here on earth. From the onset, when you look at the Bible in Genesis, he already talks about that. When we look at Genesis 1 verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. What does dominion mean? Dominion means to take charge, to have authority. From the onset, God has given this to us. And thinking not just small, but big. The whole earth, the world. To us, we don't understand it. Why? Because the truth that the Bible tells us, His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts higher than our thoughts. And God looks at a big perspective. The apostles only looked at what? The kingdom of God within Israel. But God is looking further. And Jesus came and said to them in Matthew 28, 18, So what is His great plan? It is this. Okay, why was the church built from the start? Why did Jesus tell this to the apostles? Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So Jesus speaking to them so that they would know he is speaking from authority. It's like the CEO of the company when he speaks, right? Whatever he says, it is done. The president of our country, if he says something, it is done. It's like this. But you're talking about Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If he speaks, it is done, right? No one can contest that. Matthew 28, verse 19. What did Jesus say? This is the reason. Ito yung bilin niya. What is bilin in English? Bilin. What? For the foreigners, what's bilin? Bilin. No, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. So bilin, before you go. It's like this. If you're going on a trip far away and you're telling your helpers at home or you left your son at home, what would be your message to them? What would you tell them to take care of? To the parents here, what usually do you tell your kids or to the helpers when you leave home? What do you remind them? What? Watch the teleserie? No, right? What do you tell them? Take care. Okay, take, parang fill in the blanks. Take care. Take care of what? The, the house, right? Take care of the house. Usually my mom, they tell, tells our, our helper, okay, make sure to unplug everything. Right? To check the rooms. Do not allow anyone to enter the house, even if they say you're our relative. Right? These are the, do you say that? Yes, because it's important. Now imagine this. Of all the things that Jesus would remind us before he ascended to heaven, why did he say this? Because this is the most important thing for God. Go and make disciples of all nations. There is a reason why every October here in, here in Capital City Alliance Church, we have missions October because we are following the mandate that God has left for us. And that is to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, when you talk about all nations, God really has a heart for the nations. In Genesis 12 verse 2, 
He has, his heart is to bless the nation, to be a blessing. You know, where I come from, the church that I'm in, from Every Nation Victory, I'm just so blessed that the American missionaries led by Pastor Rice Brooks and Pastor Steve Murrell, they listened to the Holy Spirit and obeyed and went to the Philippines 30 years ago. That's why we have victory here. That's why we have every nation. And you know what? Are you familiar with your history? With the history of the church? 84 years ago, a couple of American missionaries planted the church and they started in southern Mindanao. They started in southern Mindanao. And this church where we are, where you guys are seated right now, where we are staying, this actual church started by an American missionary. It started 54 years ago. Now imagine that. If the missionaries didn't heed the call to go and make disciples of all nations, honestly, where would we be right now? We won't know, right? We wouldn't know. That's why it's so powerful that as we discuss and go and make disciples of all nations, this is a serious matter. God is going to bless not just our country, but different countries of, as well, all of the nations. That is his plan. Now, maybe some of you, the plan to make disciples wherever you are, and you're probably wondering, you're probably wondering, okay, another verse. This was Paul, and Paul, the apostle Paul, God said to him, I have made you a light for the Gentiles. The Gentiles are the non-Jews, so that's all of us. If you are a Jew, you're a Jew. If not, you're called a Gentile, okay? You, I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. So this is the plan of God. To go and make disciples, not just here in Quezon City, not just here in Metro Manila, not just in the Philippines, not just in Asia, but to the ends of the earth. That is the grand plan of God. This is His plan. Now maybe some of you are asking, this task is too big. Is this possible? Can I be a part of something big? Maybe you're saying, but I'm just a little girl. Or you're young, what can I contribute? I'm shy, right? Or maybe you're a single professional. You're working, you know, I'm okay already. My family is saved. Everyone is okay. I attend church. This has been the church of my Lola, Lola. Okay, my relatives, friends. I'm okay. I cannot, you know, I'm so busy with work, with family. I don't need to, to share the gospel to other people. But you know what? You are right when you say that I cannot do it. You're right when you say that I have no time. Because if it's about you, then you cannot do it. But if it's about God's power, then you can. Why? This is the second point. Say His power. His power. God's power. What is it? Acts 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now this... Verse is very familiar, right? Familiar. When you see power, what does that mean? How does it look like? It's like this, how God sees us. You may be, for you, you may be a cat. All you do is just sleep, roll over, watch TV, eat lasagna, and then sleep. Garfield, okay? The only a few were able to react. The generation gap, okay? But then... When God sees you because of that power, that power of the Holy Spirit in you, you are a lion. I just wanted to do that to wake up a few people. Okay, there were those sleeping. Okay, can you nudge the person beside you? Say, you are a lion in God's eyes. Okay. So this is how God sees us. That's the power. Have you ever, when you look at the power, the power to heal, have you ever prayed for someone and then that person got healed? And you're wondering, what happened? It is because of the power of the Spirit of God. And you will receive that power when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You will receive that power. The power to heal. The power to forgive. Maybe some of you, when you weren't Christians yet, when you weren't followers of Jesus, you know it's better to say, a born-again Christian, better to say, a follower of Jesus. There's no heart in it. Are you really? Who among you, you believe you're a follower of Jesus? Raise your hand. See, there's, there's heart in it, there's passion, right? Hindi lang Christian, not just born again Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus. If you're a follower of Jesus, then you will follow what he says. And so besides the power, what did God say? Be a witness. You will be my witness. What does witness mean? 
You saw, you heard, you felt. You saw the miracles. You saw the signs and wonders. You saw what was happening, the transformation in a person's life because of Jesus Christ, because of the encounter. You heard. You heard the voice of God. You heard what He wants you to do. You heard, because of that, you heard the cry of the people and you prayed for this person, the office. And you're wondering, when you prayed for this person, he's wondering, how come you're like that? Why do you do that? Because you're a witness. You're a follower of Jesus and you want to be a witness. And you felt, you felt God's presence as a witness. And because of that, you felt God's presence. It's an overflow of love. How many of you remember the, when the time you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you couldn't contain your joy. All the problems, challenges, they were like, okay, it's part. But you were like floating and just enjoying yourself because of the joy, the new life that God has given. How many of you felt that when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Can I see a raise of hands? Can we give God praise for that? Because God is in the business of transforming people, right? He transforms us. And every day, okay, from glory to glory, God is transforming you. So there is always hope for us. When people are judging us, condemning us, it's okay because in Christ, there is no longer any condemnation. That's why you can smile every day. You are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And to be a, you have power to be a witness and to the ends of, what are these places? Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. If that's the mission, that's the plan, what do we do? We share. Where will we share the gospel, the good news? Jerusalem and Judea. You don't need to go that far. Jerusalem, Judea, to your surroundings. How many of you live in Quezon City? Raise your hand. How many of you live in the, within the next 10 to 20 kilometers? Raise your hand. How many of you, no matter what I say, you will not raise your hand? Raise your hand. My hand. Okay. So this is what we're doing. God is telling us to share the gospel within our area. What about Samaria? Samaria is a neighboring place. And Samaria is actually a combination of the Jews and the Gentiles. These are the people that they don't like. So you're probably saying, so Joey, I need to share the good news to people I don't like, to people I don't love. The answer is yes. Because if you are a follower of Jesus, then you will do that. Because who Jesus loves, you will love also. Who Jesus hates, you will hate also. If you hate sin, if Jesus hates sin, you hate sin. Jesus hates injustice, you hate injustice. If Jesus loves people and shows compassion for the poor, you will show compassion because of your relationship. But how, Joey, how can I do that? What's the answer? His power. God's power allows us to share the gospel. So what is our part? What do we need to do? Okay? You know His plans, His power. What is our part? If there's one thing I want you to remember this morning, it's this. If you know the why, the how will follow. Can you say that? The how will follow. You know, that's very true because when you see that, you will be reminded of you will be reminded of why you're doing things in the first place. What's with it? Why do you go to church? Why do you share? Why do you volunteer? It's because of Jesus. Period. And you know, let me share to you, you know, what, what did Jesus do to me? It's all about a relationship. You know, before, I worry a lot. Can I, can I share my testimony? Just a few minutes. Can I just share? Is it okay? You, you don't have a choice. I have the mic, right? No, it's okay. I'm just kidding. Before, I used to worry a lot. I worry about life, money, future. Who will I marry? I mean, how many of you can relate? You're a worrier before. I'd rely on my skills and talents. I'd rely on abilities. I was hot-headed, all of these things. I was like a donut, donut, empty inside, just relying on myself. So one time, a friend of mine, a business partner, Parker, invited me to church, and it was there that I encountered God. 2005, June 12. What's June 12? Independence Day, that day I gave my life to Jesus. Because that was the time I said, Lord, I'm tired. Lead me. From now on, be my Lord and Savior. I saw the value of the relationship. It's really about a personal loving relationship with Jesus. That's why, don't you wonder how come in the terms of the Bible, it says God our Father, God the Son. Because it's all about relationships. It's relationship between you 
and a loving Father. That's God. And when I accepted Jesus as a Lord and Savior, there was just overflow. Something from my back, this burden that was released, there was now peace. From worrying, there's now peace. From relying on my skills and talents and now relying on God's grace. God's grace. Before I was empty inside, now Jesus in the center. So I'm a work in progress from glory to glory. And overflow means overflow of God's love. That's why what God loves, I love. What God tells me to do, I do not because of duty, but because I want to please him. I want to put a smile in God's face. Do you want to put a smile in God's face? Thank you for the five people who said yes. Do you want to put a smile in God's face? Yes. You know why? Because we owe our life to Him. The old is gone, the new has come. How can you remember what God did for you? How can you be compelled and be passionate to share the gospel? Just remember your past. Maybe some of you, it's too painful. That's why you buried it. But it's nice to remember your past. You know why? Because you will know what God did for you. You will know the transformation, the miracle. If you're looking for a modern miracle right now, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. If you, do, you, if you see someone else besides you, you run. No, I'm just kidding. Okay? Some of you didn't get that. Later on, you will get that, okay? You will get that. But when you look in the mirror, God is looking at you, and you are a modern-day miracle. You are a miracle of God. And some of you need to hear that today. God loves you. God cares for you. Those at the, at the balcony at here, you've been a Christian for the longest time. God loves you so much that he died for you. He suffered and died for you. And you know what? If you were the only person left in this earth, our Lord Jesus Christ would still go down and suffer and die because he loves you so much. That's why, for me, there is obedience. You can obey because you look at the relationship. What did God do for you? You obey whatever he says. That's why when you say, go and make disciples, honestly, if you don't know the person and somebody tells you something, will you follow? Of course not, especially if it's a stranger, right? Why would you follow? What's in it for me? What's the catch? But if you have a personal loving relationship with Jesus and you remember what he did for you on the cross, then you would follow. Sometimes it's illogical. Sometimes you don't understand, but still you trust God. That's why you, you live by faith and not by sight. Amen? Let's give God praise for that. So what do we do? Where do we go, Joey? It's the mission field. Where will we go and make disciples? To your home? You don't need to go far. To your home. How many of you are praying for salvation of your loved ones? Raise your hand. And I'm, I'm raising my hand together with you. You know why? We're holding on to God's word. You may put them down. If you are saved, your whole household will be saved. Imagine the hope, the joy that you have right now. You want to share it with someone, right? They are stressed with worries, troubles. And how many of you know, if, when you became a Christian, a follower of Jesus, there are still troubles. How many of you, you've never encountered a trouble when you became a Christian? No way, right? There are still troubles. But take heart. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. You, your relatives, neighbors, community, office mates, going abroad, wherever God has placed you, you can reach out. You know, here is a picture of Parker Ong. Parker Ong is my business partner. After several years, we finished the business. After a year, that was in 2005, around May, he texted me and called me up and said, oh, hi, Parker. I said, how are you? And then he said, oh, Joey, how are you? I just told him, okay, now, coming from a, a breakup in a relationship. And he said, you know, Joey, maybe it's time for you to renew your relationship with God. Wow, imagine that. Strong words, right? Strong words. But guess what? He was just following the Holy Spirit through the power of God. It wasn't him who's going to convince me or transform me. It was God. But it just so happens that I was longing for God. I was searching. And when I went to church, he brought me to Fort Bonifacio. I attended. God spoke to me. And then June 12, I gave my life to Jesus. Business partners in school. This is Fiona in the middle and then Charles to the right. Fiona is a Miriam student. And Charles is an Ateneo student. During my time as a campus missionary, I reached out to them. And they accepted and they became disciples. They led care groups. Okay, they were active in church and they loved Jesus. 
you can do your part. If you're a student here, who are students here? Raise your hand. Again, if you're a student here, you don't need to go far. Your classmates, your professors, share. You pray for God's wisdom, God's timing, power of the Holy Spirit, and then you share. It could start with a prayer, just praying for someone, listening, being there, joining them for lunch, and then praying for the right time to share the gospel. To the community, um, in Victory Fort, we have what we call real life. This is our compassion ministries where we feed children, but not only feed, we make sure we disciple them. We have volunteers, and then they, we share God's word. We share the stories every Saturday, and we also have 25 real life scholars right now, which I am overseeing. We teach them how to study hard, how to be excellent, but at the same time, to remember Jesus, to have that character, Right? You can help your community. Here in this church, here in our church here, we have a community based. We're in a ministry where we can help as well. So if you're wondering, how can I help? Where will I reach out? Approach. Approach our information booth afterwards. Approach a table. I want to help our community. How can I help? You don't need to go very far. You don't need to go to Makati. You don't need to go somewhere else to Visayas or Mindanao. Here in this church, there's a community waiting for you. The question is, are you willing to obey God? Are you willing to step out of the boat by faith? You know, remember Peter? When Jesus was calling him, Peter was afraid. And then Peter, Jesus said, come, come Peter, walk. And she, Peter was able to walk on water, right? But how come he was able to walk on water? Because he stepped out of the boat. He stepped out of his comfort zone. You need to do that and step in faith. Step out in faith. Let God use you. And you will see the amazing things that God is doing. And what you need to do is when something happens, like this one, the Real Life Scholars, their parents are not from church. When they bring their parents there, slowly we engage with them until finally they're curious. How come you're doing this for free? How come you're reaching out? What's the catch? And then we share God's word. And there's nothing like, you know, sharing hope and love of Jesus to a fellow brother and sister, right? That is the hope. That is what God is sharing. And here, this is my picture when I went to China. Some of you are wondering, Joey, China, they just beat us last night, right? But God called me to be a missionary to China. Short term, I went there for 41 days. But you know, from the start, I didn't want to go to a place that was close because it was very strict. Okay, very strict. And you go to China, you know, the guards are there. Very few can speak English. They look at you. They question. But I felt God was calling me. So I went there. I went to China. And the next picture I'll show you. Please don't take any pictures. These are our brothers and sisters. These are the people that were reaching out. The upper left, that's Mike in the middle. That's our youth pastor, David. They have Chinese names, so I don't know their Chinese name. But they can have English names. You can invent your English name. That's what they do in China. And change it. If after one month you want to change you change because in the passport they have Chinese. Wow, it's a trivia for all of you, okay? But then Mike accepted Jesus and now he's attending our church and experiencing one to one, okay? Here, uh, what do we call it? Connect, experiencing connect here. We just shared. There at the upper right here, we're eating at KFC Chicken Joy. There, okay. There's, there's KFC there in China. And here at the lower left, I don't know if you see it. Lower left, that's Janela, the one doing the peace sign, you know. She's a self-proclaimed atheist. She doesn't believe in God. But she enjoys her company. Whenever we watch a movie, we eat, she joins us. And we're just sowing seeds, right? God will be the one to make it grow. She's just enjoying the company. Some of the people, that's what we do when we went to the campus. We ate, we enjoyed, we talked, we sang, and we shared the good news to them. Now, for me, it was hard. It was going beyond my comfort zone. It was my first time to go abroad without my family. I was really, I really felt like, you know, that's why I admire the OFWs, you know, leaving your family, just working. I felt that I was there for 41 days. I got homesick. But the question for us is this. Are we going to be in the Christ zone or are we going to remain in the comfort zone? As a follower of Jesus, what would you do? Are you going to just sit down, allow people to pass? You know what? You don't need to go that far. Where you live, right across the street, there are people hungry for God. And mind you, God is going to bless you like he blessed me. Spiritually, you know, when I went to China, the spiritual antenna, when you feel God's presence, that spirit, it's very clear. 
and you will feel the joy. Have you ever led someone to Christ? Can you see a raise of hands? Have you ever shared the gospel and led someone to Christ? Can I see a raise of hands? That's great. Praise God. Can we give God a hand for that, what you have done? Imagine the feeling. Imagine the feeling. And that person, you're not just um, reaching out to one person. That person will reach out to his family, to his friends, to his loved ones. So that's a challenge for us. If we are true followers of Jesus, let's be in the Christ zone.